here, I've been helping people lowering their creatinine levels for more than 10 years now. I've seen people succeeding in what many consider impossible, having stable improvements in GFR and other markers such as creatinine and insulin resistance. And there is one change that always seems to give the best results to everyone. Finding the right diet. So many patients and even doctors unfortunately seem to be extremely confused regarding the right way to eat for those with kidney issues. And that's a problem. Studies saw people even in stage 4 completely stopping the progression of GFR decline when they started following the right diet. Some even reversed it. All thanks to a way of eating that was richer in fruit and vegetables. Now very important, in this study, researchers made sure not to discriminate among vegetables. There were no forbidden fruits here. So despite what some experts say, eating more fruits and vegetables, even those unjustly banned, may directly lead to a better GFR. This is why today we will see 7 foods that were unjustly forbidden for too long and that you can actually put back on your table. Let's start with probably the most controversial food in existence. This is a fruit but everyone calls it a veggie. It's really good for you as it will help your circulation while lowering your pressure. And yet probably no dietitian ever had recommended this one to a kidney patient. But they may be wrong. I'm talking about number 7. Tomato. I bet you guys already know that tomatoes are the on the do not or limit foods lists of many websites. But did they ever tell you how healthy this incredibly misunderstood food actually is? Tomatoes may help reduce the activity of angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE in short, which causes vessels to constrict and to increase pressure. It's basically the same principle on which ACE inhibitors operate, abet, abet on a much smaller case obviously. But tomatoes do reduce the activity of angiotensin converting enzymes and this directly opens up your blood vessels and improves blood flow. And it's not just that. Studies also noted that tomato extract can reduce inflammation and disrupt platelet aggregation, which is amazing for better circulation. Great to help the kidneys. But obviously there is a problem with tomatoes. They're also pretty rich in potassium. Yes, the other reason why tomatoes do lower your pressure is potassium. And well, potassium fights hypertension. In the body, this mineral does the opposite of what sodium does. Potassium helps the muscles relax while sodium is used to contract them. And while I wouldn't recommend anyone with CKD to use pre-made tomato sauce, I don't think that in 2023 people with CKD should still be forbidden from eating fresh tomatoes. You see, while until 2020 the rule was everyone with CKD must always avoid foods rich in potassium, Today, the rule is different. Today, every single individual is supposed to follow a diet that actually suits their needs. And a potassium restriction is only supposed to be a last-ditch way of preventing serious complications. But in the meantime, the cause of high potassium levels should be addressed. A potassium restriction is not supposed to be a life sentence anymore. So if your doctor is still telling you to avoid high potassium foods, Please watch my video about this, it's up here and also down in description. Next, another superfood unjustly banned is number 6, red currants. Oh, a superfood as healthy as misunderstood. Red currants are a must in a renal diet for their taste, the fact that they are really nutrient dense and most importantly for their powerful benefits. Red currants are berries and like all berries, they're a great part of the diet of those with kidney issues or diabetes. And I would also recommend red currants to those with hypertension. Red currants are particularly rich in anthocyanins, the compounds which give the berries their red, purple, and blue pigments, which can help with protecting the arteries. 
and this incredible berry also has powerful anti-inflammatory and detoxing benefits especially for the urinary tract red currant even boasts some stress reducing properties consuming this tart berry may help decreasing cortisol production very useful to fight a possible cause of kidney damage what not many people know about red currants is that this plant was wrongfully accused in 20th century of spreading a fungus that killed pines and the US government actually banned the cultivation. Just one ban it a few years later. What this means is that today the majority of Americans can only enjoy frozen or dried red currants, which is not so bad considering that you will still get the benefits, but you will be missing their tarty, delightful taste. In any case, make this delicious berry a regular on your table. Okay, time now to see another superfood that people are still avoiding even if they don't need to. This one in particular seems to fight one of the most serious causes of kidney damage. Let's take a look! Number 5. Flaxseed Okay, this is probably one of the few foods in existence that have actually been used in serious studies to lower creatinine in people with kidney problems. Flaxseed is especially powerful for people with inflammatory kidney disease. There are studies showing that flaxseed can lower creatinine in people with inflammatory nephritis thanks to its impressive anti-inflammatory properties. And let's talk about flaxseed and diabetes. In an 8-week study in 57 people with type 2 diabetes, those who consume 1 ounce or 30 grams of flax seeds per day experienced significant reductions in HbA1c compared with those who didn't. So we are talking about a superfood that not only reduces inflammation in the body but that also fights diabetes, the number one cause of kidney failure in the world. And I mean, when you look at this, it's ridiculous to think that some experts are still telling people to avoid this food. And the reason in this case is phosphorus. Now, I'm not saying that phosphorus isn't a risk for those with kidney problems. But you see, when it comes to veggies rich in phosphorus, just like for potassium, we are almost always looking at foods that shouldn't have been banned in the first place. There is a very little correlation between the phosphorus you get from plant-based foods and the phosphorus level in your body. What can really raise your phosphorus levels is meat and additives. That's what you should be careful with, not seeds and other veggies. Besides, flax seeds really are good for you. Just remember to green them or add them to a smoothie. Don't eat them raw, your body won't digest them. If you want to add seeds to your salad, prefer chia seeds or sunflower seeds. And here's something you didn't know you can add to your salad. Number 4. Red Potatoes Okay, potatoes are amazing and delicious. It's a shame that people with kidney problems were forbidden to eat them for so long. What? Thing is, potatoes are actually very good for you. Potatoes are as rich in nutrients and fiber as many other veggies. And some potatoes are also a great source of resistant starch. This starch is not broken down and fully absorbed by the body. Instead, it reaches the large intestine where it becomes a source of nutrients for the beneficial bacteria in your gut. Research has linked resistant starch to many health benefits including reducing insulin resistance which in turn improves sugar control. But not all potatoes are the same, some are lower than others on the GI scale. Potatoes with the highest resistant starch content and the lower glycemic index are red potatoes. Yes, red potatoes are a gluten-free carb source that's low enough on the GI scale to be part of the eating plan for those with diabetes. And potatoes are also good in moderation for those with CKD that don't have to face a potassium restriction. And interestingly, you can also increase the resistant starch content of potatoes, lowering their GI even farther. But you need to cook them in the right way. To do this, store boiled potatoes in the fridge overnight and consume them cold. This will actually make them perfect for people with diabetes. Okay, up next, a fruit that directly protects the kidneys, and that's also the best friend of those with diabetes. Number 3. Coconut Coconuts are one of the few fruits richer in fats than carbs, which is great especially for people with diabetes. 
It means these fruits are a source of energy that won't spike your sugar levels. Now, much of the fat in coconut is in the form of medium chain triglycerides or MCTs. This is the only form of fat that the body can use as an immediate source of energy, a bit like carbs. So eating coconuts will make you feel more energized but without causing problems for those with diabetes. No wonder that people following the keto diet love coconuts. And MCTs are also healthy for the kidneys, especially in case of diabetes, that you can also get them in oil form to supplement your diet. Studies say they may improve insulin resistance and help overweight people lose weight. And you can also get these healthy fats naturally from coconuts. Now, like some other foods of this video, moderation is key when consuming coconuts since they are very caloric and rich in potassium. So again, if you are still limiting your potassium, get informed about it. Only a couple of foods even help here. Our number two in particular is another food with benefits so potent it was even used to lower creatinine in levels. Number two, rhubarb. Despite being one of the highest foods in oxalate, rhubarb is also a nutrient powerhouse. It's rich in many vitamins and fiber and contains compounds that are known to fight inflammation. And as we can see here, an extract from this plant was even used in those with diabetes and CKD to decrease glucose levels, decrease urea levels and even creatinine levels. Amazing! And while supplementing this extract is not the same as eating rhubarb, it's clear that this food can help us. As a food, rhubarb is especially rich in fiber and antioxidants. But as I was saying, many people are told to limit it due to its oxalate content. And while for those facing a water intake restriction and for those with recurring kidney stones, limiting oxalate may be a good strategy, the vast majority of those with kidney disease will benefit from eating rhubarb. And if you want to learn more about oxalate and your kidneys, this video up here is for you. Okay, what can be even healthier than this food? Our number one, the most alkaline veggie in the world also known for its antihypertensive properties. Number one is spinach. Now spinach is so healthy that I recommend it many times here despite its very high potassium and oxy content. Now the funny thing about spinach is that even some doctors used to recommend it even before the new guideline about potassium. Yes, spinach is that healthy. Spinach is also one of the few sources of calcium in the renal diet that will neutralize the effect of oxalate. But spinach is also one of the best sources of iron and vitamin C. It's basically one of the most nutrient foods on the planet. Stop avoiding spinach, especially try raw spinach since it is still nutrient dense but you won't overload you with potassium. One more thing, spinach is incredibly alkaline and following an alkaline diet is actually a must if you want to protect your kidneys. Okay guys, I hope that today I've made your diet a little bit easier for you. And if you want to know more about the most alkaline foods to add to your diet, this video up here is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.